Himmelblau and Riggs suggest a 10-point problem-solving process for solving material balances. I'm going to use a similar set of processes to solve a problem which is not a mass balance problem. Now, I also group these uh, processes into smaller groups um, since we often do many of these steps at the same time. So this first group is really what we do to understand that we have um, completely read and understood the problem. So we will read the problem, draw a sketch and place labels all at the same time. Um, as we go through the process. Once we have a good description, we will try to reduce a number of unknowns by looking up data or by making assumptions about certain numbers. So the choose a basis step is not always done. Um, it is always done for mass balance problems, but not for every single problem that you will encounter. Now we analyze the problem, and this involves determining the number of unknowns, determining the number of independent equations, and then doing a degree of freedom analysis, then lastly writing down the equations. In this set of steps, we end up with a set of equations that are to be solved. Um, in my mind, this is the most important step, since the remaining steps uh, may be neglected or left to a different person. So uh, a talented mathematician may be able to solve your equations even though they were not an engineer and didn't know the equations to set up in the first place. Lastly, we solve the equations and number 10 is a check step. Let's use this method to solve a problem from the textbook. The textbook problem gives a YouTube manometer and it gives this figure which pictures a final condition. The problem statement however states an initial condition where mercury is in this manometer to a depth of 12 inches in each leg. So I'm going to draw this initial condition uh, in addition to the sketch that they've given us. So we start out, this is step uh, 1, 2 and 3, the combined set of steps. So we start out by drawing the givens that they have given us. So we have our manometer. We are told that initially, or we are told that the properties of this manometer are that the one leg is 40 inches high, the other leg is 20 inches high, and that initially there is mercury to a depth of 12 inches. Obviously these levels will equalize when the system is open. So this initial height here is 12 inches. We are then told that the manometer is stoppered and that uh, mercury is added into this leg and we have the second condition. So we basically have uh, condition 1 and condition 2 is what they've drawn for us. So I think uh, we are done with the sketch. Now let's uh, add the givens. We have um, we have our known uh, distance already specified. Uh, we have the known sizes of the uh, legs. And we know the initial conditions here. I'm going to add some additional symbols. And so since this is clearly a question where they are asking, um, they are asking what the uh, height is of the liquid that is uh, over here. Now, if we read closely, the question actually asks how deep the mercury is on the right leg from the bottom of the manometer. So the sketch they've given us is slightly misleading. They're really looking for this entire height over here. So how will we determine this height? It's a pressure balance. 
So we will have to use the information about the pressure in this uh, stoppered area. Now uh, we know that uh, there is a thing called Boyle's Law which will allow us to reason about the um, differences between uh, the pressure at the initial conditions and at the final conditions uh, by relating that to the volume. So I'm going to include here a V1 and I'm going to also just notate on this here uh, that that's the V2 in the final condition. The next steps involve finding information that wasn't explicitly given in the question. Um, we know that the depth to which this uh, mercury will fill, or if we pour any kind of liquid into a manometer, this depth is completely determined by uh, the height and the density of the liquid that we're pouring in. However, the density of mercury, the liquid that they've given us, is not given in the question. So we will have to uh, look that up. So let's just uh, look that up. We find that the density of mercury is 1353 kilograms per cubic meter. In addition, we know that the initial pressure is going to determine uh, how much stuff is actually in this area when we put the, the stopper on um, and therefore we know we need to know what the atmospheric pressure was. Um, we can easily guess that that's going to be one atmosphere which is equal to 101,3 kilopascals. Step 5 is choosing a basis and since we don't have the diameter of the manometer we can choose a convenient basis for V1. Let's assume that V1 is simply one unit of volume. Step 6 is determining the unknowns. We have three unknowns. We have V2, we have H, and we have PZ. For step 7, we need to determine the number of independent equations. Put another way, do we have enough equations to solve for three unknowns? For this simple problem, it is possibly easier to write down the equations as we come up with them. So first we have a relationship between the volume that we started out with and the volume that we ended up with. Um, if we do a little bit of math, we can see that um, the height originally uh, was 8 inches and it has changed to uh, 6 inches. And we can reason that that gives us the ratio between the volumes. So uh, to put this a different way, V2 is 6, six eighths of uh, V1. So that's the first equation. Uh, the second equation has to do with the pressure in the uh, in the leg. We have the hydrostatic pressure, and so we can write that uh, P Z is equal to rho m g g h. So that's the hydrostatic pressure in that part. But of course, there's also atmospheric pressure. So we have to add that. Uh, we are also reasoning here uh, in the common way for almost all manometer problems that the pressure at any given height in the liquid uh, will be the same. In other words, the pressure at the bottom of this column of mercury will be the same as the pressure at the top of this one. Lastly, we have a relationship that involves the ideal gas law. Uh, actually, this is a restatement which uh, ignores the uh, gas constant in temperature known as Boyle's law and this says that P1 V1 must be equal to P Z V2 so that's three equations for completeness we can verify that the degrees of freedom 
is equal to the number of variables minus the number of equations. In this case, 3 minus 3 equals 0. Now we are ready to solve the equations. We can eliminate V2 by substituting into that equation, and we can eliminate Pz by substituting here. After a little bit of manipulation, we end up with a final solution for H. And when we plug all the values in, remembering to uh, state uh, the atmospheric pressure here in pascals to keep the dimensions consistent, we end up with H of 0,25 meters, which is equal to 10 inches. Now remember, the original question did not ask for this height, but rather for the entire height. And therefore, we have to add an additional uh, 14 inches. And so the final answer for the total height is 24 inches. So this is this height over here. Lastly, we check our answer. And that seems like a reasonable answer within the bounds of uh, what we expect from the question.